Hey there viewers, Eric O here, South Main Auto. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, welcome to our channel. I've got a brand new vehicle here to work on today. And it's a super busy day, but I thought this was gonna be an interesting problem and potentially an interesting fix. Uh, so this is an 05 Pacifica with the 3.5 liter. It's got a hundred and some odd thousand miles on it. I think it's kind of redundant, but uh, the guy was driving down the road and all of a sudden the car went haywire and he left me a note and he's got no power windows, no radio, no wipers, no HVAC, uh, engine lights on, ABS lights on, traction control light is on and that is the note that he left me. Um, supposedly prior to this there was no issues, just that's what happened. Um, and that's the end of the story. So he dropped it off. Kind of been anxious to do it. I got about a zillion things to do, so I hope this goes well. Uh, at any rate, when I looked at it, I did verify all this stuff. And uh, I also verified a couple other things as I tried to bring it in. The shift interlock doesn't work. <laughs> so I had to pop the bezel apart and get it in like that. Played around with some stuff. Most anything on the interior does not work. Uh, including you know the horn um, it does have turning signals but uh, yeah no horn no wipers you know no HVAC no radio pretty much like he stated power windows all that stuff's dead uh, you know heated seats the whole bit none of it works so in a situation like this and this may completely backfire on me um, what I would be my habit instead of looking at this and you know spinning around in circles you know where do I begin where do I begin I usually look at the list and think the problems all happened at once, so whatever caused one problem more than likely caused all the rest of the problems. And I may be way off because the majority of this uh, stuff here on this list does run off the totally integrated power module. So we could have a power module that's just gone on to Fritz, uh, which is not uncommon on a Dodge. Um, but what I'm going to elect to do is pick the simplest circuit that doesn't work, diagnose that circuit, independent, not look at anything else, see where that leads me and uh, see if that leads us right to the root cause. And I have had more success concentrating on something like that than I have like, well, let's, you know, let's check the windows, check the radio, check the wipers, check the HVAC, you know, and you're just can start spinning your wheels. So, um, and not saying that's a, you know, a bad approach. Everybody has a different approach, but this is what I'm going to use. I feel that looking at the list and what I've seen in there, either, uh, the shift interlock or, uh, you know, perhaps even the horn is probably the simplest, least amount of wires and modules <laughs> and things to be in the way. So I think we're going to focus on the horn. Let's see why the horn doesn't work and see if that can fix all the problems on this car. So here on the computer, I pulled this up a horn diagram and you can see it's very, very simple. Uh, we have our switch, goes through the clock spring sends the signal to the integrated power module, which if you're not familiar with it, Chrysler, that is their fuse panel, or their fuse, underhood fuse box. Um, it goes from there, it engages a relay on leg 86, which the relay is fed a full-time power. Relay closes and horn blows. So I'd say we just look at this and see uh, what's going on here. I'm still, I'm so stinking tired today work last night till almost midnight. Uh, let's see, so we're gonna grab the ground here. Look at that, you got the old, in case of the old crusties there. They're fixed. <laughs> what the, let's see if he wants to take care of that. Anyhow, open up our box here. And he claims he did check some fuses and stuff. Uh, see, our test light does work, right? Yeah, our test light does work. Okay, so according to our diagram, fuse number 28 should be a 25 amp. So there's the number 28. So we got 25, 26, 27, 28, it's 25 amp. Okay, we got power there. We'll find this horn. It doesn't tell us what number the relay is, so we'll see if we can find it here. There it is, number 43, which is right there. Which is that little guy right there. I actually have a relay jumper. 
uh, or a relay bypass. Grab one of those. What this is simply, we're just gonna just gonna test the circuit if we have power going to the relay. And the horns are good if we kick this little guy on. Look at that. Well, that verifies a ton for us. Simple as that. Um, that verifies that we have the power from our fuse to our relay. It's able to pass through the integrated power module and go to the horns and blow the horn. So that leaves only a couple circuits left. The control side. And what else? Let's see. The control side and and gosh, I cannot even think today. Let's see. This is the relay jumper, so let's test. This just is gonna give me my legs here. So we should have two of these should be hot. So what do we got? Let me get up a flashlight. Yep, so 85 and 30 should be hot. This number 85, of course we know that's gonna work in 30, so that verify that. And that's the power running from this fuse here. So 85, 30 are hot. And then we know that number 87, that's the one that goes to the horns. Uh, that goes to the horn, so it's these two here. So if we, obviously, we just heard it. We got a jumper wire here. If we were to jumper those, the horn blows. So we know that circuit's good. So that's right because essentially that's all this little micro switch did for us is jumper those two. So that leaves us, does that leave us with, that leaves us with the control side of this relay, which is number 86. Number 86 is this one right here. I guess we should test this. Even. We could just have a crappy relay in this circuit. That wouldn't that be something? If we were to ground number 86, it should blow the horn if the relay is good. Okay, so our relay is good. Um, the control side, being that this relay is fed a full-time power. And I think in another video I did with a relay, I put a link to a video that described how relays work. So I'll see if I can find that and do that again. So look in the description box or look up on your screen to see if it pops up where you can see it floating by that little eye there. Um, so what we want is, it is a ground side switched relay because it's fed full time power. So we'll hook up to our power here. Get a good clamp on this. Anything that we touch that is grounded should light up. And that was number what? Number 86. Let me just grab a jumper wire here. So I got my jump wire. So we're going 86. We'll go to our test light. And theoretically, when I go push the horn button, our test light should light. So let me go do that. You guys hear that? Okay, well, <laughs> that's interesting. Our, I didn't hear that before when I tested this horn, but I was sitting inside the car too. Uh, all right, let's just focus on what we're doing here. Uh, the test light did not light. It is obviously receiving some kind of signal to the integrated power module because <laughs> when I pushed the horn button, it felt like these two relays, uh, 55 and 56, which is the wiper on relay and the wiper high low relay. It felt, it felt like these two, at least the best I could feel through my meat nuggets, that those were the ones clicking for whatever reason. But uh, focusing on our circuit, circuit that we're looking at, we did not have a control side. Um, hmm. To gather my thoughts here, but the integrated power module is receiving something from the horn switch. So I tell you what, these take this back out, put that back in. These things come out relatively easy. Let me grab a screwdriver.
think. If we can pop this out and see what kind of signal this thing is receiving, maybe. Okay, hopefully there's enough wire. A little bit of dirt and dust down here. just visual inspection I've seen these things like nothing but big green pussy messes I don't see any green oozing out of the wires now this one here is a little bit crusty but that's I don't know that's orange and red that could be some kind of power wire for the module Let's get the uh, wiring color for the horn input. Let me see if I can get that. Okay, I got it. There it says connector C4, pin 2, which is dark green and purple. And frankly, I don't know which connector is C, whatever I said it was, C4. Sometimes it's easier to just look for the wire color in a pin 2 socket than it is to actually go and figure out which pin, it, which one of these is which. So what did it say? It said it's pin two, it's dark green and violet. So is that uh what's that? That's dark green and red. We're just gonna look for dark green and violet, see if it's in pin two, which I think is this one right here. That'd be nice. That's relatively accessible, I think. You guys see? Yeah. Okay, so this looks like a dark green and blue or purple. So it says dark green and purple, dark green and violet, and pin two. That's the second one over. So let me get a uh, back probe. So here's the back probe. Let's see if we can't stick that in there. Hopefully this is the right one. If not, we'll keep looking. I think I have connection, so we'll do it in a similar fashion. We're going to hook up to a positive because this should be receiving a ground side switch. I'm trying to do this so I don't catch this thing on fire here. Let's see. So, anything we touch, I'll tell you what, let me be a little safer about this here. I'm going to hook my test light to a positive. Okay, and then we're gonna go like this and like this. That's a little bit safer. We're gonna see what signal this thing's receiving. Oh, we had a little toot there. Okay. Well, um, we had a little toot. <laughs> And we're in the right wire. Um, it's got a. Okay. So basically, I know there's other things going on here in this uh, integrated power module. Uh, we're we're back probed. The integrated power module is receiving, you know, the signal, the trigger from the horn switch, and it lit up the light bright. So I know it's enough. You know, I mean, I know that's kind of a cheesy way, or you might think it's a cheesy way, but um, it is receiving a ground signal. Uh, from there, it's taking the ground signal and processes it or whatever it does with it, uh, because it doesn't tell us because it's all solid state electronics in there and it should be turning on the relay. It should provide the relay with the ground. So uh, this integrated power module input goes in from the horn switch, power module does its magic, closes the uh, relay um, I mean it kind of looks like that the integrated power module is is failing because we have all these other symptoms too but I guess one thing that comes to mind um, I don't know where the integrated power module gets its ground 
to ground the relay, I guess if that makes sense. So uh, the switch is just a signal. It is not the ground for the relay, I wouldn't think. Um, so what I, you know, in order for the uh, integrated power module to ground that relay, it itself needs a ground. So I would say before we condemn, you know, the power module, let's just real quick go through, we'll pull up a ground diagram, a ground distribution wire diagram and see where all the grounds are on this, make sure they're good. If they're good, we'll verify the grounds, we'll verify the powers so that this integrated power module can work. And then, you know, either call it a power module or, you know, whatever the case may be. So I think we're on the right path. Okay, I hope this is all making sense. Like I said, I'm beyond exhausted today. So let's see what we can find here. See if we can find a ground distribution. Excuse me, wire diagram here. Here's ground. Okay, let's. And I see one right off the bat right here. Let me click on this. Uh, there's probably going to be more than one. Let me zoom in here. We'll go through all these grounds. This, Okay, so twos, oh twos. Oh, there's one right there. Let me just write these down. So we've got connector C1. It's black. Dark green. That's a pin six. Okay. There's another one over here. So that's connector C7. And what pin is that? That is number eight. And that was black with orange. Let's see how many more we find here. Look at that, there's another one right there. This thing's probably littered with them. Okay, so that is connector C5. What is that? That is black with yellow. Might have to get a connector diagram now, and that is pin number 14. Okay. Horns. Okay, I don't see any more in this diagram, so let's go to the next one. Driver door, okay. Hope this doesn't bore everybody while I'm poking through here, but. Passenger door. Hope I'm not looking past when my eyes are getting scrambled here. All right, so we got another one right there. So that is connector C4. That is the connector we were just in, right? C4. And that is pin number 12. That is gray with black. Okay. Oops, looks like we got more stuff down here. Sorry, jumping the gun. That is the body module. Nope, we should be good. Okay, let me grab my test light. Got a power probe, got my list. And we're just going to do this the easy way. We're going to see if these ground circuits, which all just go to chassis grounds of some sort. And, and here, we're just going to go down our list. Connector C1 is dark or black with dark green, if I can read my own writing. I think that is a common Chrysler color for um, a little more than so the connector we were in, this one down here, we know that one's C4. Really, I don't know any really rhyme or reason. Uh, so black with dark green, which I see right here is a giant black with dark green. If there's any numbers on it. Oh, there is. So that's number 15. 15. Well, that should be number 6. 
There's number six. Let's see if we got a ground there. Okay, you can see we got a ground there. Oops. Use a back probe. So black to dark green. Let's connect your C1. Let's go to connector C4 just because we know where that's at, because that's one. And that's the one down there, right? Isn't that the one we were in for the horn? Connector C4. Like that. Oh yeah, C4 up here. Jeez. I'm looking down there like I don't see the color. So C4, gray with black. Number 12 hole. That has number 12 on it. It is gray with black, so we should have a ground here. And we do, you can see our test light. Hope, can you see it? Our test light lights up, so we got that ground, so that's two of them. Uh, one, two, three, four. I wonder if that's how they're doing. So that's connector four. Uh, five, six, seven. I wonder if that's connector seven down here then. Number 14, black with yellow. We're gonna find a wire with a black with yellow stripe, see if it's in the right hole. Let me see. I'm not seeing you black. I'm not seeing you black with yellow. Where's this one? Is it yellow, yellow. Is it black? Come on. I should probably just get a print out of these colors. Okay, here we go. There's a black with yellow. There's a black with yellow right there. Let me see if I can find some numbers. What's it supposed to be? Black with yellow, pin C5. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So that would make sense. Number 14. Let's see, that's number 17, it says. So if that's 17, Oh, okay, yeah, so that is the red pin. So we got a black with yellow here. It looks like the only black and yellow one anyway, so we gotta be right. Let me see if I can get a probe in here. There is a little bit of green crust in this connector, I think. I don't know where we're looking at, but a light hint of green crusties. These power modules are a super high failure item. So I won't be surprised if it is bad. There's black with yellow. Get into it. Into it and okay, here's where we got a problem. So this is what the test light looks like on a good ground. We got a nice bright light there. There we go. I can unplug this connector. Get this thing off here. Yeah, if you ain't got a red light, we got this nonsense stuff here. Got these uh, little lock tabs that are difficult. <laughs> Sure we're in the right hole here. Let's see. Black with yellow, number 14. So 16, 15, 14. Yes, we are in the right hole. Black with yellow. Right there. Aha, so the ground we were getting is just back feeding. We have Make 
sure I've got a good connection. We may have found the problem. I want to jump to the conclusion it's black with yellow. Right there. Make sure my test, light, test light's good. Black with yellow. We have no ground. Okay, let's check our, we got one last one to check anyway, so C7, black with orange, so if that's five, six, that's seven down there, black with orange, you can see it from here. We're going to back probe this, okay. We've got a good bright ground there. This black with yellow, right? Black with yellow, it is the third one down. All right, nope. Yes, third one in. That is that one there. We have no ground. So, quick test before we even see. Yeah, this thing's a stinking twist around. Let me see, see if I can make sure I get a good connection here. Let's uh, plug this back in and we'll be nice to it and we'll give it a ground. Let's see if our horn works amongst other things. Ah, the back probe fell out. That was epic fail. Okay, we're in, we're locked. Got a red clip. Let me try to. There's just enough room for Find our black with yellow again. There's two of them in here that look almost identical, but I want to make sure we're getting the right one before we go grounding something we shouldn't. That is black with yellow. I hear some relays clicking in there. Hope you can see the intensity of this light on the video. Good? Bad jump wire here probably should be using a fused one but I'm not now we have a good ground Let's see if the horn works the horn does not work did I take the relay out the relay is in Providing it. Let's make sure we're still hooked up here with our probe. Keep that in. Okay, the probe is still hooked up. Got a good ground. But I have no horn. That's kind of bizarre. That's weird. All I did right there is turn the key on and on. Unless I wasn't pushing the horn button, right? That's the whole wheel. Let me just take away, take away our ground. Got no horn. Provide it with the ground. Okay, maybe I was missing the button, I guess. But did you notice when I turned the I don't know if you can you see, yeah, you can see the weapon. I turned the key on, I think. I think we fixed everything. Let's see, this is all stable. There's no reason I can't start it or turn the key on. this well you can see I had to bezel off because we couldn't get it in ah sweet look at that we got shift interlock we've got our HVAC back we've got a radio 
ABS light is out. Money lights on. I tell you what, let's. Uh, oh, we got and we had wipers because I seen them go. So I tell you what, let's do this. Experiment time. Wipers on. Obviously, we've got it because if I remove that, look at what our ground's doing now. Do that black the sun here. It is flickering. Our wipers have quit. Whoa. We've got no HVAC, no radio. All the lights are on on the dash. Oh. We've got no horn. Turn that on. We've got wipers. We've got horn. Alright. Shut this off. Okay. Well. Hmm. I'll grab my seat here. So we got one more thing to figure out is this connector C5, number 14, black and yellow. Where does it go? Oh, I didn't verify. Well, we got to verify the windows work. That was another. And the power windows work and the retained accessory power is on. So that's good. I thought for sure this integrated power module was going to be toast. <laughs> That's why you check. It would have been a five, six hundred dollar mistake if you didn't. Okay. We'll get this stuff all untangled. And so evidently when the integrated power module receives the signal for the horn relay and must be a multitude of other relays or whatever. Uh, it utilizes this black with yellow wire to uh, provide the integrated power module with a ground in which it can provide the relay with the ground to close the circuit. So, uh, you know, you just can't pull the ground out of thin air. You know, the, the power module has to have a ground to provide to the relay, if that makes sense. Uh, I don't know why the horn there didn't work initially at first for me. My bad connection, who knows, I don't know. That's besides the point. So, just set this here, let's go back to the uh, computer. And we gotta find out where we had this one, that was C4. Oh, that's black with yellow, that's not the one we want. That was towards the top, that should be on. Maybe it was on the other diagram. Let's just look at that real quick. Okay, there's the power module. That was the big wire. Oops. So it's not that one. It's not that one. It's this one right here. Integrated power module. Also goes to ground 103 at left front of engine compartment. You know what? I have repaired these grounds before because look, there was another video I did, you remember? One of the headlights wasn't working, I don't remember which one, but we traced it down to a ground that was there in the left front. Ah, it'd be funny if it's the same thing. <laughs> ground 103, so let's see where our ground 103 is. Let's see if we can find it here. I have a very big suspicion now that I see it's the same ground that runs the headlights simply because I've uh, repaired headlights on these before. Um, where are we at here? Electrical components. Components. We're going to go to grounds. We want ground 103 and left front of engine compartment. See figure. We're going to zoom in on this. So there's our integrated power module. Oh yeah. Ground 103. Okay, let me get oriented here. Okay, so this is the front of the vehicle up here. 
So our radiator would be sitting in this area, so it is one of those studs. I bet you dollars to donuts that if we take this apart that we are going to find a whole clump of green down here. I've been here before. Alright, we got to take and pull this uh, headlight out. I'll post a link to the other Pacifica video that I did. That's how it'd be good. You guys get to watch me break this live. Um, we did another Pacifica, if you remember right. If you've watched it, and I think it came in, I think it was the driver's headlight also. It had no high beam or no, no something. Something on it didn't work also had no ground and we chased it down to what I suspect is the same ground we're going after it now I thought we could see it through here I see a little mouse damage no we couldn't see it through there but I can see it through here. Um, bear with me, folks. Ground 103, let me just look at the, it looks like it's the lowermost. Looks like there should be three studs here, and it's possibly the lowermost stud, which I can't really see. Huge harness in the way. Let's get a mirror. I will try my best with this, but I have a mirror shoved down here now. Let's see if we can see this. The stud there that has the wires hanging out of it, hanging down. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. Boy, it's really difficult to see on the video. Um, let me try to move this so you guys can see it. This is a really tough spot to shoot. That's the best I can do for you. That is being reflected through a mirror. That is our black with yellow wire there. I know it's not focusing very well. Hopefully you can see the oxidation on it. I believe that is going to be our problem simply because I have repaired those before. Okay, back that out. So that ground is actually up underneath that harness there. Um, kind of zoom this out where you're at, come in, go straight down. It's like the driver's side frame rail. It's up under there. I'll see if I can do uh, better, and we're gonna check this out. Let's see if we can't just take and unhook it. Um, get a better look at it. Looks like there's two separate eyelets that hook to it. Okay, got it loose. Sorry I can't record what I'm actually doing. It's quite cramped in here. There's one set of wires right there. There's one eyelet which is get them up. <laughs> so there's one eyelet, I was going to say right here, try to fish this out so we can see it. Uh, man, I just feel weak today, I'm so tired. Okay, so there's one eyelet. You can barely touch this stupid thing. Here's the other set of eyelets. This thing is super crusty. Let me get the camera around here. I'll do the best I can with this. So, uh, I was getting a camera. Here is the uh, connector here. I'm sorry, I can't zoom in on it. I'm holding the camera in one hand. I pulled on our black with yellow wire and it easily uh, broke out of this harness along with another wire there, like a uh, black with green it appears. So, being that these two are very, very loose in there, 
and uh, obviously we're just about rotted through causing a poor ground we're going to take and cut off all of these ground wires and we're going to solder on new uh, eyelets and hook it back up well I was just reaching down to cut it off whoa gosh no headlight there and uh, I simply pulled on the eyelet and that's what I ended up with let's uh, see if you can see that there but I'm sure this is going to be our cause because this thing is nothing but just just green pus pretty interesting pretty good find I think uh, so we'll get the wires I got to cut them back because they probably got a little bit of green growing up in them so I'm still going to snip them back a little bit uh, this is all coming back to me now about fixing another one I think it's pretty tough to get in there and you know manipulate around some some eyelets so I'm gonna do the best I can I'll kick the camera on show you the fix and hopefully it fixed all this guy's problems oh man I don't know if any guys should have to work on two C4s in the same day <laughs> anyhow I've got those wires repaired the best that I could so you can see what I did down there is I just soldered on let me see if I can set this light down I just soldered on a couple new eyelets I couldn't get them all in one eyelet so I just did two eyelets I think that's what I did on the other one it sure seemed familiar because it's awful hard to reach down there with one hand and do a uh, thing you need two hands for I got the camera wedge down here for you try to do the best I can I can't really see the monitor very well so hopefully you can see the fix hopefully it looks good <laughs> uh, but yeah I just uh, put it back on that stud with the other wires there that we took off and I tightened it down so now We'll get our camera back up out of here. Whoa, hang on. Here we go. So you're back up out of there. Before we put the headlight and stuff in, we'll see if everything works here. Ah, there it is. That button is a little tricky. Obviously I have wipers. Money light's still on. Our radio works. Well, it's on, anyways. Got radio. We've got the HVAC. All the lights are off. See, uh, window goes up. We got it. Well, that is a particularly dirty job for what we had to do. Man, it was it was tight reaching down in there. Um, Real quick though, let's see what the engine light is. <laughs> Make sure, I'm sure it probably has a host of communication codes or something. I'll grab my little code reader and just see what the light is. Let's see, we want to read codes from the engine. A U110C lost fuel level message. And a PO660 intake manifold tuning valve open uh, circuit open bank one huh well the uh, intake manifold tuning valves are an issue on these so what we're going to do we're not even going to look into this we're going to clear the codes because he said he had no engine light prior to this and uh, we're going to leave it at that i think that's the best thing to do he wasn't having any problems prior to this i can only assume that you know whatever those two codes are whatever they pertain to was generated from this bad ground from it you know who knows where this thing was snagging the ground from it's probably just back feeding through every circuit uh there's no sense in wasting any more time wondering you know why or where or how because simply we can clear it we'll give it back to him if the money light comes on we'll get it back but I would say in uh, an effort to save him money of us just spinning our wheels and wasting time looking at a code that potentially could be a erroneous code, we'll just send it down the road. I very well could plug in the other scan tool that has bi-directional support and command this intake manifold runner on and off. And I did notice the gas gauge is working, so I assume you know the PCM is receiving the correct fuel level signal. But like I say, he didn't have any of these problems until they all happened at the same time. So I'm not too worried about it. But uh, I am happy to see that uh, we did go the extra step to test the inputs into the totally integrated power module before condemning it. Uh, because quite honestly, uh, you could get in a hurry 
and know just like I do that these fully integrated power modules fail all the time, you know, and the new caravans and the Jeeps and the Chrysler or the Pacificas, you know, everything, they always go bad and they have a bunch of weird wacko problems, you know. Uh, the most recent ones I've been doing with the caravans is the, uh, the wind module goes bad, which is the spot where you insert the key. Uh, that goes bad, no start, no crank. Um, we've done a few of those, uh, but Chrysler just recalled them just weeks ago, you know, just a few weeks ago in the last part of May. So that's pretty nice because now the people can get them done for free when they're rather expensive. Uh, these power modules, let's see, the last one I had come in was on a, oh, well, it was a 2010 uh, caravan. The guy would drive down the road and the doors would open randomly. That's a neat option when you have kids. Uh, your power sliding doors will come open, the rear hatch will come open. Um, I had another one pull in one day, a guy pulls in the parking lot and the horn's stuck on and his wiper squirters are stuck on. So his horn's blowing, wipers are going, it emptied out his washer jug, he shuts the car off and it's still just continuing to do this. Um, so yeah, their totally integrated power modules are notorious for, for failing and they're difficult to get because they're quite often on back order. Um, and to be very honest with you, that is what I suspected was going to be wrong with this and I thought we would just go through, verify it. You know, yeah, we got ground, we got power. You know, horn relay's not working. Maybe we would have chased down like one more to, you know, make 100% certain. But uh, you can see the value. I hope you can see the value in just focusing on just one circuit and not worrying about what everything else is doing. Um, that's just my approach. And uh, right or wrong, I don't know. I'm sure you guys will leave your feedback because you always do, uh, which I always appreciate. And, but I think we were successful at this one, obviously. We've got it fixed and the customer should be happy and uh, we got it fixed in a relatively short period of time. And it was fixed pretty simply with just labor and about 50 cents worth of parts uh, and a little bit of thinking. So uh, I guess that's it. Leave your questions, comments, concerns in the comment box below. I'll try to remember to post a video for the other Chrysler Pacifica that we fixed. And if I remember correctly, had the same exact broken set of wires uh, for the headlight so uh, I would say I'm starting to see a little bit of a pattern here because I've seen that prior to even doing that video uh, I guess I don't recall and I can think you know seeing one associated to the power module because typically power module is bad so anyhow that's enough rambling thanks for watching give us a thumbs up if you like this uh, video check us out on Facebook and you can check us out on Google Plus too find us there add us to your circles I guess you could say like us on Facebook. Uh, at any rate, viewers, just remember, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.